A descendant of the ancient African warrior chieftain known as Tantu, the beautiful Mari Jiwe McCabe was born in the Gambi Plains in Zambezi, Africa from parents, village Christian priest Richard Jiwe and Jean Mari Jiwe who was sadly murdered in front of her daughter as a warning to her husband to stop preaching his doctrine by a small warlord named Aku Kwesi who next covered up the murder as a poaching incident. A time after, Mari will be given her mother's Anansi Tantu totem necklace by her father which supposedly held the power of the voodoo animal spirits and the morphogenic field which her father didn't believe in such claims before he too was tragically killed by his half brother General Mustafa Maxai for not giving him the fox shaped magic talisman which Mari would also shockingly witness before fleeing for her life and at some point in the future she will make it to America and become a top fashion model as well as a reality TV star gracing hundreds of magazines and inspiring waves of designers as a runway icon along with being an animal activist. Meanwhile having a superhero alter ego called Vixen while channeling her innate powers using a tattoo totem to mimic the abilities of any animal she can think of in her quest to take down evildoers. One being destroying corrupt businessman Mordecai Mule first shipment in America to force him and his men to go to India where he could be caught poaching red handed and prosecuted after she used her contact in publishing to send American reporters to catch him in the act so they could overlap the coverage in their high fashion magazine as a warrant to other illegal fur importers in the states and with the assist of Superman who first thought Vixen was a foe until she revealed she was friend they brought the criminals to justice. Succeeding this, Vixen's concern about ecology and the dignity of life will bring her back to the first and currently the only superhero friend she knows, Superman, to help her find and rescue 14 missing kids, one being her friend's nephew, in a bizarre incident when the victims were teleported after successfully scoring the extremely difficult 100,000 points in an arcade game called Galaxy Starfighter, which would lead them to the creator of the game, one-time admiral of the US Navy, Carlton Cerebris of Cerebris Exports on his private yacht who was conducting an experiment on the mind of the kids he abducted to gain access to tremendous psychic power and force only to become a victim of his own device from an overcharge after Vixen broke the conduit connection causing our heroes to save the day once again. Later when a reorganized Justice League of America was established by Aquaman, Vixen would abruptly quit her photo shoot in mid Manhattan to request the full time membership which she would immediately be accepted since she was associated with Superman. Thus now making her part of a team consisting of leader Aquaman, the Martian Manhunter, Zatanna, Elongated Man, Citizen Steel, and Chief Designer and Technician Dale Gunn, who Vixen and Zatanna will have a crush on, with their new headquarters being in Detroit within Lake Michigan. Later, Vixen would take down two gunmen who were on a high speed chase with the law, which would next be revealed they were linked to the terrorist group known as Red Dawn that was financed by the Central African nation of Mashinga, backed by her uncle General Mustafa Maxa. So a furious vixen finding this out went after him who too was searching for her for 15 years in order to retrieve the Tantu totem. So when vixen hunt him down in New York she immediately engaged in battle against her wild and unpredictable uncle as the ferocious and deadly man who killed her father with his habit of blind cruelty and violence wouldn't stop at anything to accomplish his mission. When Vixen was next shot and fell several stories out of the window to the ground before breaking her fall on a tree branch while her team right after showed up after Zatanna tracked Vixen down by using her magic to assist her which turned into them saving her from certain doom. Unfortunately her uncle couldn't be brought to justice since there wasn't any evidence against him and the Justice League was more at fault by attacking him and his men in the eyes of the law because of Vixen's personal agenda to exact her own vengeance. Succeeding this, Vixen and Dale Gunn would become a couple, which Zatanna would shockingly witness since she was hoping to be with him, making her dislike for Vixen even more, which now put Dale in a complicated position. Moreover, Vixen's uncle would demand her show up at the Regis Theater by midnight, or his hostage, the elderly old woman that was friends of the Justice League, Mother Wyndham, would be executed. Nonetheless, Vixen wouldn't hesitate to show up to show out, but this time with a plan. Knowing her uncle won the Tantu totem, which she would willingly give him. Knowing the legend of Tantu and Anansi the spider, wisest of all creatures, knew that one day man will rule the world 
And when that day came, no innocent would be saved from man's fury, least of all beasts. So Anansi struck a deal with Tantu in exchange for Tantu and his descendants' dedication to protect the innocent with the fox totem, which General Maxi would knowingly and already broken the oath with his dark heart, which permanently transformed him into a mindless red gourd ox. So after Vixen took the old woman to safety, she easily retrieved her Tantu totem from the beast before he was impaled, thus breaking his curse with his death, making the man that was responsible for her father's murder no more. After many missions later, the Martian Manhunter, by the order of the President of the United States, disbanded the Justice League due to eternal conflict and the death of members Citizen Steel and Paco Raymond, aka Vibe. So Mari took time off and headed back to Africa on a spiritual journey where she made her way to Ethiopia. And when her funds got low, she returned back to her career in modeling after a year and a half of absence. And when she took a quick break to go snorkeling in the beach of Colombia, she returned to find her whole photo shoot team gunned down. So she next got in contact with her friends in the drug enforcement community, who then got in touch with Roy Harper, aka the superhero Speedy, that was part of the Suicide Squad, which in turn got Amanda Waller involved on the case. Which will be concluded, the photographer inadvertently took a picture of a drug transfer between a boat and a seaplane on the Caribbean waters, and someone on the boat noticed which led to the massacre on the beach as a precaution by the Medellin cartel that ran the bulk of the world's cocaine traffic from Colombia. So since the Colombian government can't and won't stop them, Amanda Waller's suicide squad will illegally bring them down without jurisdiction by utterly destroying their fortress and drug supply in the jungle after they killed the cartel's crime lord Xavier Cujo in their own form of serving justice, which they would go on to never be accomplished with Mari being the one to strike the fatal blow to Cujo, which she would initially feel guilty of doing until she was later offered a position on the Suicide Squad by Waller, which she surprisingly accepted after careful thought. Following this, Vixen would be consoled by the Martian Manhunter after still feeling guilt over the cartel boss life she took on her last mission. While not long after, Vixen would meet the squad's new leader, Benjamin Turner, aka Bronze Tiger. And later during a mission, they will build an attraction to one another, always being seen together. And when they went to Uganda and East Africa to free a hostage nun from freedom fighters, they would further connect after being reminded of the extreme poverty level their people were enduring, which broke their hearts as they comfort each other. Moreover, Vixen would meet Bernhard Baker, aka Animal Man, who had similar powers to her, however, with a 30 minute time limit and not needing a totem or any other device to channel it. So not long after, they will be attacked by Taboo, who too can tap into the red and gain animal powers, which was channeled through the mini animal mask she wore to hide her disfigured face as she was working for He Who Never Dies, Hamed Ali. And when our heroes finally defeated them, it was revealed Taboo was a blood relative of Vixen and shared a single impulse of the animal masters before she died and gave Vixen her shadow life spirit that would combine with Vixen's light spirit and a cry of relief that would increase Vixen's attributes while awakening her ancestral memories. Moreover, Vixen and the Bronze Tiger would officially become a couple, while further down the line, she would accompany him to the Central Bureau of Intelligence, where he was summoned by his higher-ups to be unjustly interrogated about his loyalty to the government. And when an unspecified amount of time went by, he would burst out of there like a madman and run off into the night, leaving Vixen behind calling out for him. And right after, the Suicide Squad would be shut down effective immediately by the orders of the US government after the imprisonment of Amanda Waller. Furthermore, a year would go by with no word from her boyfriend, and Vixen would be seen in Paris, presenting her first clothing line collection that received high praise at Paris Fashion Week, when Waller, now out of prison, showed up and revealed to her that her boyfriend who was believed dead was indeed alive. So together, they made their way to the capital city of Uganda in South Africa, where they would find Ben in a bar, deeply troubled and disturbed, and distancing himself from his prior life. However, Vixen snapped on him for letting the government manipulate his mind, which caused them to engage in a brief battle, where both combatants were mainly dodging one another's attacks, before Waller put a stop to the confrontation. Furthermore, now that the Suicide Squad had reformed, Ben would surprisingly continue to remain distant from everyone. And when Vixen later aided him in taking down the Russian super being Stanovok, aka Steel Wolf, he would give her attitude about her interference, which she wouldn't stand for it. Thereafter, 
Now in Jerusalem with her team, Vixen will be consulted by Walla about her crumbling relation with Ben and his current mental condition that needed tending to, which Walla would advise her to leave the unwilling alone. So later down the line, at the Institute for Meta-Human Studies outside Pittsburgh, Vixen would finally call it quits with Ben after running out of love and hopelessly trying to salvage their relationship while putting her life on hold. As time progressed, Vixen would be aiding the superheroine Helena Bertinelli, aka Huntress, a member of the Birds of Prey, stop a cult and free their mind control victims. In addition, she would later help Wally West, aka Flash, take down the super intelligent, telepathic, anthropomorphic gorilla named Gorilla Groid, while almost killing him in a primal rage due to her totem. What's more, Vixen would one day be invited on a false impression to a dinner date by Victor Sage, aka The Question, only to get ambushed by two villains, Executioner and Plastique, who were after her tattoo totem, which they would shockingly snatch from her before making their great escape. Subsequently after, Vixen would hunt for her totem, while being able to hold a flying trace of a peregrine falcon without needing her talisman, as her instincts directed her to travel from her current location of Illinois all the way to New York City, where she would immediately attack the android Amazo, who had revolutionary absorption cell technology that enables him to replicate the powers of any metahuman he encounters, while ironically also happened to be in possession of Vixen's tattoo totem, which she now reclaimed because of her energy link with it. As she inadvertently defeated Amazo, who was in a winning battle against the Justice League, which unintentionally got her a membership by Superman to join the new reformed Justice League. However, later she would realize a drastic change had occurred to her powers since the day she attacked Amazo with an unusual powerful blow. And next, during training, when she inadvertently used Brian Markov, aka Geoforce, gravity manipulation powers to save Roy Harper, aka Arsenal, from colliding with a tree at 60 miles per hour. As well as when her, along with members of her team, went to Congo, Africa, and she knowingly leached off of Jay Garrett, the first Flash, Speed Force, when scouting out Gorilla City. Nevertheless, Superman would later realize her secret and confront her about it, hoping she would go on and tell the rest of the team how she's been deceitful by drawing from their powers without permission these last couple of weeks. Luckily, Superman will give her permission to draw from his in the meantime. Not long after, 10 of the world's worst criminals looking for asylum offered and forced their way into the Hall of Justice to give themselves up in order not to be turned over to the Suicide Squad, who had a warrant for their arrest and was planning on sending them to the inhumane prison planet. Moreover, Bronze Tiger would appear with his team, surprisingly showing no interest in Vixen, but only the criminals at hand. So when the big guns of the Justice League stepped up, also refusing the Bronze Tiger's demand, he immediately left with his team to avoid physical conflict, only for him to later double back alone as the first wave when the Big Three wasn't currently present at the Watchtower, assaulting Arsenal, before he was confronted by Vixen, which caused them to engage in a tense battle with one another, as Vixen mimicked all the Bronze Tiger moves set and strength, while simultaneously confusing him with her new found abilities, before the second wave of the Suicide Squad arrived, only for their members to be single-handedly defeated by Vixen, as their plan backfired when the Big Three finally showed up, so the Bronze Tiger hauled his team from further engagement to head back to Amanda Waller with a mission fail before threatening the Justice League with repercussions for interfering with government affairs. On top of that, Vixen would later search out the Bronze Tiger, locating him on a rooftop in Detroit, Michigan, surveilling, since she still held intimate feelings towards him, while he also came to realize her new power copying abilities, which she then added it also was draining those she mimicked, endangering their safety during battle. So they next came to the conclusion that she needed to come clean with her whole team, even if risking losing her membership. As they would later go on a picnic date and have a deep and long philosophical discussion about the spirit of the world and the surprising similar ideas found across many martial arts that he had mastered, along with the poet named Yeats, who believe in universal symbols shared by everyone because of the common connection to God. Nonetheless, she went on to tell her team the truth in the conference room as Superman tried to back her up, willing to bear the consequences to her actions with her. However, Chairwoman Dana Lance, aka Black Canary, decided the best course of action was to terminate Vixen's membership, effective immediately. While next, having Zatanna try and fix the Tantu totem with her magic. Unfortunately, Anansi's powers were too great for Zatanna to override. Not long after, now in San Diego, California, Vixen, along with Zatanna and Firestorm, will make their way to Animal Man's home, 
to possibly find a solution for Vixen's powers, as Animal Man's ability too had changed from mimicking Earth animals to only able to siphon off of extraterrestrial species. What's more, Vixen would suddenly be transported within the Tantu Totem, now trapped within the God of Stories, Kweku Anansi's web of tricks. And not long after, Animal Man would be sucked in the totem, now joining Vixen. As Anansi revealed, he was responsible for Animal Man's powers, and not aliens who he was led to believe all these years. Unsurprisingly, Vixen will overcome Anansi's test to prove him right, that she is worthy of being the guardian of the totem, by winning the trials he set before her, after he changed the nature of reality where she had to restore it. From the false lies alternate version of the Justice League now live, one being the controversial white hero who turns into a black superhero for one hour named the Brown Bomber after saying the magic words, black power. Moreover, she will pass the trickster's God and teacher of lessons test that played on her insecurities along with the altering of her powers and forcing her to reclaim them in order to be his agent of change, his champion. Nevertheless, Vixen will gain her original powers back and then after reinstated back on the team while Animal Man was offered membership only to refuse as he was content with dealing with street level crimes but willing to assist on call notification if need be. Furthermore, Anansi would after summon Vixen to aid in protecting the reality altering and dimension bending Dharma who was responsible in merging the DC universe with the Milestone universe which she would inevitably do at the last stand in the Himalayas Amakalu Peak to save Dharma from the cosmic vampire that feeds off of stars and planets named Starbreaker, thus saving the universe. Not long after, Black Canary would disband the Justice League and Vixen would lead a newly reformed version against the Royal Flush Gang who demanded $25 million from every casino in Las Vegas or they'll start executing their hostages. And after they were defeated and other battles after, Vixen would sadly have her feet broken in four different places by Prometheus, a twisted mirror image of Batman who swore to annihilate the forces of justice after his criminal parents were slaughtered by the cops. While following that, her arm would next be broken after fighting a resurrected Citizen Steel who was now a Black Lantern during the Blackest Night before his connection to the Black Power Ring was severed and his lantern body was destroyed by Kamiyo Koyoshi aka Dr. Light. Surprisingly next, Vixen would leave her team to take time to heal mentally and physically which would simultaneously disband them to start a new incarnation of the Justice League, even against Dr. Light's wishes for her to stay. As time progressed and now fully recovered, Vixen would head back to the homeland of Zambisa for redemption and finding herself while encountering her childhood friend, Abiesa. Not long after, Vixen would confront a gang of men who was sent by the man who killed her mother and now was terrorizing her village by forcefully taking young girls as his wives, along with other atrocities. Nonetheless, after defeating them, she would soon be reminded by a mysterious old man who was secretly a Nazi in disguise, calling himself Brother Tabo, keeper of the shrine of Saint Tamika, that the Tantu Totem is not the source of her powers, but only serves as a medium. Following this, she would go on to aid the Justice League who came to assist her, but was attacked by Aku Kwesi's associates, an organized crime syndicate who uses technology from the planet Apocalypse called the Intergame who managed to mind control Superman and Black Canary. However, Vixen will use an antidote to cure Superman using mouth to mouth, which wasn't the first time she did that. It was when she restored his powers around the time her powers were altered, which maybe is evident that she harbors secret feelings towards him. Anyhow, she would next engage in battle with her mother's killer himself in an epic battle of vengeance to restore the balance of her suffering by giving herself closure. And when she finally defeated Kwesi, she left the village people to do as they pleased with him. While she found a love interest in one of Kwesi's men named Sia, who aided her and saved her life by betraying his warlord. That being said, Mari Jiwei McCabe is DC Comics' Vixen.